Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Children's Church. Today's lesson is God Knows My Heart and Mind. We'll begin reading in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. The Bible says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I'll begin today by, by asking a question. Uh, boys and girls, how do other people know what type of person you are? Well, the only way others can know anything about you is by watching the things that you do and listening to the things that you say. Now, I want to use an illustration this morning. Uh, the person that's helping here this morning with uh, the camera and the video is a teenage boy. He's 16 years of age, and he'll be going into the 11th grade the next year. Now, I've known this young man since he was in third grade. I've observed him. I've watched him. I've seen his actions. And one thing I can tell you about this young man is that he loves God, and he wants to please God. Now, I've determined that by watching his life over these last several years. But God does not need to wait to hear your words. He doesn't have to watch the actions that you take to know everything about you. God is God. He can look deep within you, and he knows your every thought. He sees the thoughts of your heart and your mind. He knows what you are like on the inside. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, men looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Well, boys and girls, today we're going to be looking at our hearts. Point one, and we're going to go back to Genesis, and once again, we're going to be looking at Noah. I'm going to begin reading in chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Point one, the world was wicked, but Noah stood out in a crowd. He certainly was not like any of the other people who lived around him. The Bible tells us the people of Noah's day were very wicked. In fact, they were so wicked that God had decided that he was going to destroy his wonderful creation just to get rid of them. Every time God looked at man and the things that he was doing, God was heartbroken. God had created the earth with all the plants and the animals and the humans to bring honor and glory to himself. God's plan was for man to love him and to spend time with him. But then man sinned. So the world was wicked. But the second point is, Noah was different. But as God looked at the earth, he saw one man who stood out from the crowd. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was different from everyone else. Genesis 6, 9 tells us, why Noah was different. First it says that Noah was a just man. This means that Noah was an honest man. He was a fair man. When others did business with Noah, he didn't cheat. He didn't lie to them. When Noah had to decide on a matter, he did what was fair. He did what was right. He was just and he was righteous. What about you, boys and girls? 
Are you honest? Are you just? Do you do things that are fair? Well, the second thing we see here in this verse is that Noah was perfect in his generation. In other words, Noah lived the kind of life that no one could find fault with. No one could find a problem with the way that Noah was living. When other people talked to Noah, they knew that he would tell the truth. When others had business dealings with Noah, they knew that he would be honest. When others gave Noah a job, they knew that he would do his very best. No one could accuse Noah of doing wrong. Boys and girls, no matter what job we have, no matter what task we have, we are to do our very best. When we do schoolwork, we are to do our very best. When we play sports, we are due to do our very best. We are to obey. We are to do our very best. No one else on earth at that time was at all like Noah. Well, one more thing that we see here in, in verse, verse, not, uh, verse 8, <clears throat> but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah walked with God. In other words, Noah took the time to have a personal relationship with God. Noah had fellowship with God. He walked with God. He talked with God. And boys and girls, when we talk, when we refer to talking with God, you know, we pray to the Lord. We go to the Lord in prayer. We ask the Lord to help us through certain situations. We ask the Lord to help us on a multitude of ways. And when we pray, we also thank the Lord for who he is. Well, that was Noah. God loved Noah. Noah must have been a man of true value and character. It wasn't easy for Noah to be just and perfect and to walk with God. Everyone around Noah, as the Bible says, was wicked. They hated God and they loved sin. But they noticed that Noah was different. Now you can be sure that God noticed that also. They probably talked to Noah. They probably tried to persuade Noah to do some of these wicked things. But Noah didn't give in to that pressure. Noah stood alone and God noticed. Point three that we see here is God saw that Noah was different. God knew Noah's heart and mind. God could look deep inside into Noah's heart. He could look inside of his mind. He saw that Noah loved God. He saw that Noah lived a pure life because he wanted to please God. And because of Noah, God did not destroy the entire creation. Noah made a big difference. A difference by obeying God. Point four, you can be like Noah. What did Noah do right? He thought right, and he acted right. Right thinking will lead to right acting or right behavior. What isn't simple, boys and girls, is making up your mind to think and then to act the way that God wants you to. It wasn't easy for Noah, and it's not always easy for us. Noah lived in a, a wicked world. He lived in a world where People did many bad things. Everyone uh, lived in sin and they enjoyed their sin. Well, that's much like the world we live in today. We are surrounded by people 
who live and think wickedly. They think bad things. They live in sin and they enjoy their sin. But the wisest thing that we can do is to live a life that is pleasing in God's eyes. You'll never regret doing what is right and God will be pleased with you. Well, let's move on to uh, this point here that obedience starts on the inside. Love and obedience to God begins in the heart and in the mind. If you determine in your heart and mind to love God and to obey God, then your actions will show it. You will do what you think about. Do right, and you will do right. Think right, and you will think right. Act right, and you will act right. The choice is yours. What is your choice? Will you listen to Satan when he comes to plant seeds of doubt and rebellion in your heart and mind? How about when your parents or someone that loves you comes and they, they ask you to clean your room? Oh, it's easy to be angry in your heart. How about when you can't do something that all your friends are doing? It's easy to wonder if you're missing out on all the fun. When other people talked to Noah, they knew that he was different. It's not always easy to think right in your heart. It's not always easy to think right in your mind. It's not easy to act the right way in front of a sinful world. But to choose to act right, to choose to do right, pleases God. You can decide today to be like Noah. You can decide to please God. Never forget that God sees your heart and mind. God is still God. He knows what you think about. He knows how you feel about things. He knows if you desire to please Him. He knows if you want to obey Him. And God is ready and God is willing to help you to do right. Never forget that both sin and obedience starts in the heart and in the mind. And you can decide what you think about. Guard your mind and you'll be able to control your actions. Let me give you a challenge today, boys and girls. It helps to think and to do the right things when you remember that God can see your heart and mind. I challenge you this week to take the time to examine what you think about in your mind, what you think about in your heart. Think about good things. Think about pleasant things. Think about things that will please the Lord. Think about things that will please your parents. Remember that what is on the inside of your heart will eventually be on the outside. Ask God to help you to keep your heart and your mind pure so that the inside in the outside of your life will please God. Let's pray. Dear Father, we do thank you for these boys and girls. Father, we thank you that the Lord is, is with us. We thank you that the, the Lord is there to, to help us in time of troubles. He's there to help us when we're joyful. He's there. He's, he's there. He's with us at all times. And Lord, we know that he sees our every thought he knows our every thought. And Father, we would just pray for these boys and girls today that they would have a pure heart, a pure mind to serve the living God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.